the coil also worked another one of his new ideas, the lighting of rooms. Here are two lighting tubes. No wires, absolutely no supply of power. Now, let's lower the room lights and run up the coil and see what happens to these tubes. Ordinary domestic AC has only 50 or 60 cycles a second. But this is high frequency, where the coil discharges 10,000 times a second. The intense, rapidly changing field around the coil excites the molecules of gas in the tube and makes them glow. Photographs were taken by this artificial daylight. One was acclaimed by palmists, then fashionable for character reading from hands. Tesla's long thumbs showed high intelligence, they said. The argument being, apparently, that apes, who are not bright, have short thumbs. Tesla never tried to develop the lighting idea commercially, although he did go as far as to illuminate his laboratory with this forerunner of today's fluorescent lighting. If only Tesla had met more people like George Westinghouse, the only businessman to put a major Tesla invention into production. Niagara was hugely successful. It sent power as far as Buffalo, 20 miles away, and started the world's first electrochemical factory complex. The factories made aluminium, fertilizers, abrasives, and explosives. Neither the factories nor the sending of power to Buffalo would have been possible with the original DC. Edison recognized defeat. Tesla had already devised his alternating current system, his high frequency coil, and the rudimentary system of fluorescent lighting. And not for one man's lifetime, you might think. Not so. There was much more to come. First, in 1893, that's two years before Marconi, Tesla demonstrated wireless. These were the circuits he showed to the National Electric Light Association in St. Louis. This is the transmitter. It's got an oscillator, earth wire, and aerial. And the signal goes from this aerial to the receiver's aerial. And that one is a mirror image of the transmitter. Aerial, earth wire, and oscillating circuit. Now, the amazing thing is that the equipment could be tuned to receive one specific frequency. Now, very new, very modern wireless sets have a little light which comes on when the set latches onto a station. Tesla worked on the same principle 90 years ago. So when I tune this set precisely, the little light comes on. Remarkable enough for 1893, but more was to follow. His tuned circuits led Tesla to design and demonstrate a boat, a model boat, and it was still in the 1890s, which combined both radio control and robotics. The boat operated on a lake in Madison Square Gardens, and it was at least 40 years ahead of its time. It moved forward, the rudder switched right or left, the lights operated all by remote control. The audience called out for boat movements and Tesla maneuvered the boat from a box like this. But what's much more important is because of the fine tuning, no enemy with a more powerful transmitter could ever take over the control of the boat. Developments of Tesla radio control are now used all the way from crop spraying aircraft to guided missiles. But when he first used them, tea clippers were still the queens of the ocean, and the main means of transport was still the horse. The world might have moved ahead faster if Tesla had been more like Edison, more interested in making money. But he was living well on his profits from the Westinghouse contract and he could afford to indulge in his fixed ideas. 
Tesla believed that the inventor was an explorer, not a farmer. Explorers open trails to new lands and they don't bother themselves with the daily grind of growing crops. That was one of his obsessions. He was also mortally afraid of germs. Even at the height of his fame, he always dined alone. His only companion, a pile of clean table napkins. The number of napkins had to be divisible by three. With one, he kept his hand free of contamination. With another, he cleaned the glassware. He had to calculate the volume of food in every dish before he ate it. He also gave up drinking alcohol, except whiskey, in an attempt to live up to the age of 120. These fixations about health influenced his work. He was the first to suggest that high frequency current could be applied to medicine. It's used to speed the regrowth of damaged body tissue. True to form, Tesla never patented the idea. He didn't want to profit from something that was for the good of humanity. And before Röntgen fully announced his discovery of x-rays in 1895, Tesla was able to produce pictures like this. Using one of his high frequency lamps, he claimed to take x-ray photographs from a distance of no less than 40 feet. Tesla might have shown pictures like this before Röntgen, but disaster struck first. Fire destroyed his laboratory with all his equipment, all his notes, covering years of effort. It was a turning point. From now on, his fortunes changed. The rest of his life was devoted to trying to transmit power and messages without wires. In 1899, he moved west to Colorado Springs, on the edge of the Rockies, where the wild terrain naturally attracts thunderstorms. Tesla believed that when lightning struck, the impact created huge electrical standing waves, rather like the crests and troughs of water set up around a pebble tossed into a pond. Each day he traveled out of town in a buckboard to test his theories. Keep on prodding the earth at its own natural frequency. And like the lake, standing waves might set up right throughout the planet, ready to be picked up anywhere. Lightning, he thought, might do this naturally. If electrical impulses could be transmitted by this method using the stratosphere as a return path, it might be possible, it might just be possible, he thought, to make power available anywhere along the globe without the use of wires. This is the exact spot near the Deaf and Blind Institute where Tesla had an enormous experimental station built. There's not a trace of it left today. <laughs> 